Google SketchUp has a section plane tool, which is used mostly for looking inside things. For example, you can model a house and place a section plane just below the roof when you're ready to add furniture inside a room. But the section plane tool is also very handy for exploring relationships between 2D and 3D geometry. In this example, we'll start with a cone and use the section plane tool to create some well-known 2D objects. To create the cone, start in top view and activate circle. A SketchUp circle is really a segmented approximation of a circle. The default number of sides is 24. If you want a more accurate representation of a circle, type a higher number, such as 100, which appears in the sides field, and press enter. Click a center point, and then click a point along the circumference. Orbit up like this, and activate push-pull. Click the circular face, and pull up to create a cylinder. Now we need to shrink the top face of the cylinder. First, select this face, then activate the Scale tool. Hover over a green drag handle, which turns red, then press and hold the Control key, or Option on the Mac, so that the scaling will be relative to the center of the circle. Click and drag the red handle and move the mouse inward, and click again to create the cone. You can find the Section Plane tool in the Tools menu or down here in the large tool set. Activate Section Plane and a small preview plane with arrows is attached to your cursor. The Section Plane will align to any plane that your cursor touches, but we want to keep the Section Plane flat. So move the cursor into some blank space, press and hold the Shift key to keep the plane flat, and click somewhere in the middle of the cone. When you slice a cone this way, you get a circle. Now we'll see what happens when the section plane is rotated. A section plane can be manipulated just like any other SketchUp object. Start by selecting the section plane and orbit to a view like this. Then activate Rotate. When the cursor is up here, the protractor is vertical. Click to place the protractor somewhere around here, above the section plane. Then click anywhere, and move the mouse to rotate the section plane. Click when you have a section like this. This 2D object is an ellipse. With the section plane still selected, activate Move. Moving a section plane is always done in the direction perpendicular to the plane. Click a point anywhere and move the mouse until the section plane is entirely within the cone. This 2D object is a parabola. With the section plane still selected, activate Rotate. This time the plane will be made vertical. Orbit like this and make sure the protractor is vertical. Press and hold the Shift key to keep it vertical and click anywhere on the section plane, looking for the On Section pop-up. For the first rotation point, click somewhere else on the section plane, then rotate up until the plane is parallel to the blue axis. If needed, you can move the section plane to either side. This 2D shape is a hyperbola. If you want to save your 2D shape, Right-click on the section plane and choose Create Group from Slice. This creates a group consisting of the hyperbola and the horizontal line along the bottom. I'm going to move this group away from the cone. When you no longer need the section plane, activate the eraser and erase it. Sectioning can be used to solve interesting problems with more complex 3D objects. For example, say you have a cube octahedron and want to know the 2D shape that runs through its center. Place a section plane along this face, 
Select the section plane and activate Rotate. Click and drag the mouse along this edge to define the rotation axis. To start the rotation, click anywhere on the section plane and then click here to complete the rotation. The section through the center of a cube octahedron is a hexagon. Or take an icosadodecahedron, which consists of pentagons and triangles. Placing a section plane through the middle of this object yields a decagon.